Hello everybody and welcome to Discover Labyrinths with Lars Hallett. Today we are going to learn how to draw the Seven Circuit Classical Labyrinth with a compass. Now you may be familiar with drawing it freehand from the seed pattern, which I demonstrated in another video and is probably the most popular method for creating the Classical Labyrinth, simply and easily with the seed pattern. But it's not precise and it's difficult when you're creating a canvas labyrinth or a refined drawing or a um, permanent labyrinth that would be a classical labyrinth. You want it to be more precise. So for this, um, you only need a compass and um, from the seed pattern, you draw the seed and then you connect all the dots and lines. But with the compass method, what you actually do is you start by drawing um, the curves, the paths, the circuits, and then you finish uh, here in the center of the seed. So it's uh, kind of a reverse um, method. And the first thing to notice about the classical labyrinth is that it is not a circle. So, um, you know, if this is the center, where we stand, you can see that it's 15 uh, squares to the top, but around the bottom it only comes down 12. So um, another tricky thing about laying out this labyrinth is that the center of your labyrinth is not the center um, of it uh, in measurement. The center would actually be here kind of somewhat um, a quarter of the way up in this first pathway. So you can see there's seven and a half uh, path widths to the top and only six path widths to the bottom. And this also reveals the first secret to drawing it with the compass, which is that the top half of the classical labyrinth is simply um, concentric circles. So this is how we will begin, which is drawing eight concentric circles to create the top half of the labyrinth. Okay, so for this demonstration we've decided that the labyrinth is going to be um, two um, grid paths or two blocks in, in width and um, this will be consistent throughout the labyrinth. So knowing that this will be a two block width that means that there will be a invisible square here, which corresponds to the seed pattern, if you are familiar with that. And that invisible square um, will be eight blocks um, wide in dimension, eight by eight. I mean, it could be anything, it could be six by six or four by four, but for this exercise, it's gonna be eight by eight, right? And so the first thing that we will do will be to um, plot out the corners of that eight by eight square. And then we need to choose to put one more dot on this, which would be the center where we stand. And you may also be familiar with classical labyrinths that they can either be right-handed or left-handed where they enter to the left. This is a right-handed labyrinth because it enters into the right. So the center is off to the left. And you can see that it's one, two, three um, lines in. Um, so if we did this the same, we would put that point, the center of our center, three blocks in from the left, and that would make this a right-handed labyrinth. Now you could also do the opposite, which would be to make that first dot three dots in from the right and put it here, and then that would make this a left-handed labyrinth instead. But the majority of historic classical labyrinths were right-handed, so I like to draw uh, classical labyrinths right-handed. But if I was creating this in a space that um, seemed to uh, be copacetic to a left-handed entrance, then I would create a left-handed classical labyrinth instead. But enough of the talking, let's uh, draw this. Um, so we're going to put our point of our compass there on the center where we stand, the center center, and the first circle that we draw is actually only one block wide. So it's one half path width, and it's a very tiny circle, and um, we're just drawing a half circle like that. 
Now the rest of the circles, we're gonna open this up two blocks, right, which is our full path width, and we're gonna draw another half circle, and then open it up two blocks, and do another half circle, and another two blocks, and another half circle. Now two blocks, again, is arbitrary. It could be uh, three or five, as long as it's consistent. Um, your path width, right? So two is our path width for this demonstration. And we're gonna keep expanding the compass until we've drawn eight circles, which will create the seven pathways, right? Because you need eight um, lines to create seven paths. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we've got our eight. Now we're actually halfway done drawing our labyrinth. Um, the next thing we will do is um, these points on the square are actually the line ends and they will be the other four points where we will put our compass point. Okay, so um, we're actually done with this uh, center point and it's the only one that would be erased. So, um, because it doesn't become a part of the design. But the other ones are the end points. And so then we will put our compass point, um, we'll start here on the upper left corner. And now we are going to create the turns. So we are going to connect this turn around. Now, then we are going to go and we're gonna connect it one more time. and make those two 180 degree circles. And you can actually see we've created the um, arrival into our center. It goes up, around, and then around, boom, and there it is. Now we're gonna come over to this side and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do one, oops, let's see, one, two, And um, then it's a little tricky. We're gonna expand this out and we're gonna create quarter circles um, for the rest of the um, uh, points. So we're gonna connect this top half of the circle to that dot and then connect the top half of this to... And there's an invisible line that's kind of running down and it's actually the part of that square. So if you were having trouble with this, you could actually draw in um, this square uh, faintly to see where you would stop on those quarter turns, right? So we're gonna finish up with these quarter turns. Quarter turn there another one coming out and you can see it ends at that line end all the way out and then one more okay so now we've drawn uh, from the center point and the two top points and then we need to finish up with these bottom two uh, line ends and uh, on this side we will draw two half circles to complete that first turn. Oops, I lost my point. Good thing about using a pencil is you can always erase. So here we go. And then over here we will create one half semicircle and then one quarter circle. And that is our um, seven circuit classical labyrinth drawn with a compass. Now what's interesting about this is that there are no straight lines in the entire labyrinth, which is kind of neat. You can see that instead of the cross in the center or the plus sign, we actually end up with a diamond center, which is kind of nice. And that could create an altar space or a space to stand um, for people 
um, because this labyrinth only has really room for one in the center. So this could be an extra space um, for people to stand when they arrive at the center or to step aside and let people pass when they're walking. Um, I also like the look of it because there are no hard angles, no right angles in this labyrinth. They're all circles or half circles or quarter circles. So it ends up becoming a very beautiful um, labyrinth. And obviously if you've drawn that square, you want to erase your square and uh, erase that little dot that you had in the center where you stand. Um, now, another interesting thing is that if you are laying this out for a permanent labyrinth, then you need to note that the center of your labyrinth, as I said earlier, is not, I mean, the center where you stand is not the center of the design. And also the center of the seed is clearly not the center of the design. Um, if you want to lay this out in a uh, physical space and you want it to be a simpler process, then you can expand the um, drawing um, and you can add a set of parallel lines all the way through the center. And this, I've expanded three um, grids, three blocks, right? So now um, this labyrinth is actually um, uh, the center of the labyrinth is actually the center of the space. So you can see that it's um, 15 blocks on the top, but then also the entrance is 15 blocks down to the bottom. So this could be a 30 by 30 foot labyrinth or a 15 by 15 foot labyrinth if you were creating it um, permanently. Now, the way to do this is to draw your square, right? And have your, your square but then you're going to add, uh, you're gonna shift up your square and actually end up making a rectangle, right? And so this rectangle is 11 by eight by 11 by eight. You're drawing the top half of the labyrinth just like we did um, before, but then you are dropping down these lines and completing the rest of it also like we did before. Um, so the process would be to draw the top half, then to draw the parallel lines, and then to complete the bottom as you did before. And what I like about this is that also when you arrive at the center, you come around and you end up um, having a little more space to walk up and find yourself in the center space. Whereas in this, you can see that you come around and they're really the center ends abruptly. And if people start to leave things here in the center, um, then you know you can actually start to lose your center um, completely. Whereas this allows for maybe an altar space in the center where you stand, or it allows maybe even two or three people to kind of stand in there together. All right, well, I think that's all the tips and tricks I have for creating a classical seven circuit labyrinth with a compass. Uh, hope you practice and if you liked this video and uh, appreciated it then please uh, comment uh, like and subscribe to the discover labyrinth channel as that will help other people um, find it uh, and see this video as well thanks for watching and happy labyrinth drawing bye bye